Hey, how's it going? Z-Man Attack here. I want to thank you for tuning in to Snowly Games. As always, I appreciate you very much. And today, I'll be reviewing Cruisin' Blast for Nintendo Switch by developer Raw Thrills, publisher Raw Thrills and Game Mill Entertainment. And it was released January 17th for the arcade and September 14th, 2021 for Nintendo Switch. And this is a casual arcade racing game with a lot of perilous close calls and high octane action along the way. As far as the gameplay, you will experience fast-paced, adrenaline-inducing mayhem, all the while racing around dangerous near-miss obstacles that vary per tour. These tours are themed with dinosaurs, aliens, natural disasters, hot pursuit, and more. In classic arcade mode, there are a select handful of these courses from the cruising tour mode that are chosen for a more streamlined, single-race arcade-esque approach, however, still very fun. There's some fun to be had in the time trial mode as well, if you're into that sort of thing. Grinding for the fastest time is pretty much up there with high score chasing and other types of games, so I'm with it. Single race is quite self-explanatory and gives the player the option to race on any track from the cruising tour mode with no limits and or order. In the main modes, you will need to be on the lookout for three hidden keys in each level. And this, along with the cash that you earn from racing in general, is needed to unlock more content in the game. This additional content includes extra vehicles and the general progression of leveling up your vehicles, level 5 being the max. Some of the extra vehicles include an Indy car, a UFO, and even a unicorn. There are quite a few more, but I'll let that remain a surprise for you. The upgrades for your vehicles include custom paint jobs, which you have access to from the start, neon light kits, decals, body kits, engine upgrades, and consumable nitrous units, which you can only have a max of five. Each set of upgrades are relative to each vehicle and are therefore unique. I welcome that design choice with open arms and I appreciate the effort. Speaking of, it brings me great joy to inform you that all content in this game is all achieved via grinding and unlocking, just the way you remember it in the games back in the day. No DLC. Well, at least at this time there aren't any. Multiplayer modes are restricted to 2 through 4 player split screen mode and local wireless connection directly to additional switches with their own copy of the game. If you're looking for online multiplayer, sadly you won't find it here. It's a bit of a shame too because this game is wicked fun and can be very competitive in a fun way of course. It's also worth noting that there's a pretty powerful rubber banding mechanic in this game that can be rather intense when it comes down to the end of the race. It's definitely present all throughout, but when you approach that finish line, be sure that you've saved some nitrous because you may need it at the last moment. Now, rubber banding and all, this game really does capture the fast paced and accessible gameplay that series veterans have come to know and love. So what more could you ask for, right? When it comes to the controls, they are just as snappy and responsive as you remember. However, this game utilizes some practices that help simplify it no matter which method you decide to go with. There's the standard gamepad method with analog and d-pad for movement and face buttons and triggers for acceleration, nitrous, and drifting. Then there's the single joy-con method where you can use the face buttons in SLSR or you can activate gyro functionality and slot it into a steering wheel peripheral. There is also an auto accelerate option to further the ease of use for those that may not be as coordinated when it comes to gaming. Now these options can be activated at any time from the pause menu with any control option that supports said features. Also in that pause menu, you'll find the toggle for HD rumble, which feels pretty decent in this game. Now drifting, which can be activated by pressing and holding ZR or letting go of and then holding the A button, feels a little loose, but once you play around with it and eventually master it, you'll be gliding like butter on those curves and snake paths. You can earn yourself a nitrous boost if you drift long enough, and it feels so good when you successfully execute it too. Pressing the X button will change the music track during gameplay if there is one that you would prefer to hear than the default one. Pressing the Y button during gameplay will change your view to either first person, third person, and third person chase view. Nitrous is activated with ZL and it really gives that sense of speed in the heat of the moment. If you collide a certain way with your AI opponents, you can cause them to crash to get them out of the way. Side note, we tried this while playing with human racers and it doesn't work the same at all. Just a general collision where you try to nudge the other racers against the wall and whatnot. Now, as far as the visuals, this is a very clean looking game. Car models and environments may look dated when you slow down and look at them up close, 
and some of the NPCs like Dinosaurs and the Yeti are a bit low res when it comes to textures, but overall this is a good looking game collectively. As when you're going at such high speeds it doesn't really matter too much how things are looking around you because it's detailed enough and still looks good. And even though some of these things look dated, it still looks very clean in HD. And this game has a clarity in which you just have to really study it and take it all in and realize that it can look decent and still run it at 60fps in single player mode on the Switch. These traits carry over seamlessly when playing in handheld mode and I imagine that it would be further enhanced visually on the Switch OLED. Now I don't own one so if anyone watching has one and the game and can attest its superior graphical fidelity then please feel free to post it in the comments. The animations and particle effects are definitely working overtime in this game when it comes to the drift trails, nitrous boost, and car stunts you perform. This is a flashy game, and it knows it. So when it comes to the sound design, oh my goodness, are you in for a treat. The soundtrack in this game is phenomenal. We have an eclectic mix of ethnic, electronic, rock, and retro synth music pumping through our speakers as we zoom through the chaos dodging obstacles as we go. This music is probably some of the best I've heard in an arcade racing game in quite some time, with R4 Ridge Racer Type 4 being my all-time favorite. Sadly, not all the tracks seem to have made it over from the original arcade release, but most are present. Sound effects are strong and vibrant, and sound design as a whole are mastered fairly well. Now, there are some instances where some of the engine sounds will go silent from time to time, but it's not too much of a detractor as long as those awesome tunes keep pumping. Collision sounds seem accurate, and every other sound does well enough to get the job done. Another weird thing I noticed though, is that when you use a character that doesn't have any wheels, like say, the unicorn or shark, they still seem to have tire skidding sound effects to them. Uh, a little lazy in my opinion, but then again it must have been for the giggles, since the fact that such creatures exist as a racer in this type of game is peculiar to begin with. So that one's up in the air for me. So, in conclusion. Cruisin' Blast is a wondrous thrill ride that is a must play with a group of friends, and yes, even solo. Throw realistic and simulation racer out of the equation, and brace yourself for the most extreme and outlandish arcade racing experience that you never knew you needed. With its addictive gameplay and upgrade system, you can easily find yourself locked into 3 hour play sessions without realizing it. The clean visuals and bumping soundtrack all mesh so well together, and the unlock system in general is a much welcome inclusion in a world now dominated by making an extra buck via microtransactions and DLC. At $39.99, this is such a good bargain for what you get, and well worth it in my opinion, and I highly recommend. My final score for Cruisin' Blast is 8 out of 10. If you like what you saw, definitely like, comment, subscribe. Remember to keep it locked to Snowly Games for all of your indie game, third party game, tech review coverages, and sometimes Nintendo and retro games thrown in the mix. All right, have a good one. Take care.